ahead and get started. Frank, is Brenda on? Yes, good. Um, I'd like to call this meeting of the Village Trustees to order on September 5th at 8.15 a.m. And I'd like to call the meeting of the select board to order September 5th, 8.15 a.m. for a joint meeting of trustees. Are there any additions or deletions from the agenda? I'd just like to see if we could um, flip the discussion and the votes. We're going to vote first and then discussion afterwards, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that okay with everybody? Oh. Appointing this first. Okay. Yep. So yep. The, the vote is uh, my color. Have... Oh, but it's nothing on it. That's okay. Right. Nothing on um, so, you. did you want to finish? Yeah, so uh, Mike Teller has joined us um, working in plan and zoning. Uh, so a few weeks ago, the planning commission and then the joint boards made Stephanie uh, the administrative officer. In the meantime, uh, now we have Mike on working with us. Uh, last night, the planning commission voted to make him the new administrative officer. Uh, we're asking the boards to do the same today uh, after asking him a few questions um, to make sure we have someone in plan and zoning who can be the administrative officer, have those duties. And then we help transition Stephanie away from plan and zoning into my office. Um, so, Mike, I don't know if you want to give it a little introduction about yourself and sure. what you've been doing and what you hope to do here in Woodstock. And actually, can you first just start off by what does the administrative officer do? I think. Oh, uh, okay. Do you want to? Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, uh, you know, I'll be overseeing, you know, basically uh, all the planning and zoning functions on the town's behalf and village behalf. Um, and I'm overseeing any amendment processes, the short term rental program. Uh, I plan to be active in uh, inspecting properties, uh, both COs and uh, permitting uh, efforts that are starting in, in the beginning uh, phases. Uh, you know, the focus will be also uh, working closely with the regional commission on initiatives and trying to work with them in terms of kind of creating teams that help push initiatives. Uh, through the town and village that may be well received. And, um, you know, I've been a practicing planner for almost 25 years now. Uh, most of it was down in Georgia and in metropolitan Atlanta, but I've been here since 2016. I worked for the regional commission in Rutland doing transportation. Um, after that, I worked in the town of Wilmington during the pandemic, uh, on a, both as a zoning administrator and the health officer for the community. And uh, more recently, I was the uh, town administrator for the town of Jamaica, working primarily on the, the flooding uh, over the past two events that took place last year. So I've got a, quite an experience in housing, resiliency, um, planning uh, backgrounds. And looking forward to kind of helping move initiatives through that are well, well supported locally. And maybe stuff that may be a little more contentious too. <laughs> for... <laughs> Justin, do you have questions? Any questions? Brenda and uh, Frank online. Carrie's there too. Oh, Carrie, sorry. Well, that's right, Sean. Any questions, Carrie? No, no questions. Um, I have one question. What is, do you have sort of a, with your experience, do you have sort of a general philosophy on town planning? Well, you know, the, the focus for me is is particularly permitting and acting kind of as a representative for the town and, and trying to help property owners get uh, applications through the process. Uh, it is tends to be kind of cumbersome for a lot of people and just trying to hold their hand through the steps as, that would be needed to to garner an uh, you know an approval. Hopefully, in the town, may require some conditions uh, to get to that. But, uh, Helping out, being a, kind of an agent for the town, getting it permitting done, and really helping with other planning initiatives for the community. You know, really whatever those are. Um, you know, and if if need need be, I, I have done a lot of enforcement. Um, you know, through code compliance actions, uh, working with the state. So I'm experienced in doing that. Uh, you know, I do issuing notices of violation if, if those are needed. But hopefully. I'm more of a proponent of the velvet glove approach of trying to get getting people towards compliance and seeing what steps we can take as opposed to you know, just being taking the heavy hand approach. I have a question then. Sure. What you just said. So we used to have someone involved in planning and zoning who rode his bicycle around the village. 
and then you get a call. You know that fence you're putting up? You know, you, you needed to apply for that. Um, he enforced zoning regulations. Um, yeah. Would you be going around um, and taking a look at things to, to find zoning violations? Because unless they're reported, how would you get them? Well, you know, with the nature of the work I'm doing, it's probably going to be more complaint driven. Uh, as opposed to me seeking out issues. I mean, if there's something that's glaring, I do that, but I'm, I'm hopeful that I'm going to be focused more on the, the issues that are more problematic in the town as opposed to those that may have been inherent or almost grandfathered over time. Um, you know, I do want to kind of pick my fights, so to speak, and just try to, you know, help help the community out and not really looking for uh, kind of getting in the middle of, of you know, ongoing disputes. I mean, the nature of what we do, there's always neighbor on neighbor uh, issues. And uh, we in government tend to get in the middle of it, whether we want to or not many times. And it's important that we handle it uh, judiciously and, and ethically and in a manner that is reasonable because it will potentially be challenged. So we're going to do everything, you know, based on the code and what would be in the best interest of the town but primarily the code right now. Mm -hmm. well, you know, the village downtown is really close by. I might want to walk <laughs> around once in a while. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we're also working internally to have someone do a little more enforcement for us, um, maybe on a part-time basis to go out and kind of inspect things that either make sure they are doing things correctly or if they have not got a permit to kind of talk to them as well and make sure. So. So the initial thing we're working on that we just haven't put together yet due to timing, but we are working on that. And hopefully within the next few weeks, we'll have an announcement on that. Any other questions? Okay, if not, I would make a, a motion for the trustees to uh, approve Mike as our administrative officer. Is there a second? second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All those in favor? Aye. Congratulations. Thanks. Sort of. Thank you, Mike. The next item is discussion of the illegal. Yep. So, um, Yesterday, I emailed um, all board members kind of an updated sheet that we put together. You also have a hard copy in front of you. Um, what we try to do is kind of bring a little more clarity to the conversation we had last week um, of kind of the goals that both boards tend to agree to, which were housing development, effective and efficient government, um, affordability, and climate resiliency. Um, we kind of try to work on the emission statements to follow. Um, we kind of then put down where we thought internally those things would fall that we talked about last week. Uh, so you can see if it has um, an X underneath it, we, I feel it's those those boxes. If it doesn't have an X on it, then it may not fall in that category. Um, I also reached out to Daniel Woodstock for some ideas for uh, climate resiliency. So you'll see those in there as well, that, that, that comes from them. Um, but I thought this might be a, a easier way for us to kind of continue the conversation. Um, I also created some guidelines up above as, and we can, you know, not include as we want to, but a way to kind of make sure the things the boards decide on, take these into consideration. Uh, one of the things we talked about last week was making effective use of my time, the staff's time, and also the board's times. So I think as we go through these goals, make sure that these goals will follow that, but also the steps we lay out, we'll make sure that we're using everyone's time as effectively as possible. Um, talked before about making Korean goals that are attainable, but also fall into a larger picture. So, you know, things we can accomplish in a year, two years, but also, as we talked about, we can't solve housing in two years, but what steps can we take each year to get closer to our housing situation? Um, and then using goals as objectives and priorities for the board, staff, and commissions. So, in a scenario, if we're talking about something in the village as uh, foliage preparation, that means that the trustees should be talking about that every single agenda item, every single month, working towards a solution. That means the planning commission may be working on some sort of issue that helps with that. It means 
um, to import. So it, it means it's it's setting up so we know what we're talking about each year. And when a flashy item comes up, we can redirect ourselves saying, no, we're talking about this thing. Let's focus on these priorities we set for ourselves um, you know, in these meetings. Um, so that's kind of how we put it together uh, for today's meeting. Obviously, we can change it as the board sees fit. Um, but if you want to walk through what we have, maybe it's a good way to start. Um, so something that came up a lot in the conversation was the uh, acquisition of Woodstock Aqueduct and the capital projects. Um, we bill internally that fits into all four categories. You know, we can't have any more development until we have more water flow. Um, you know, controlling the water system and the sewer system allows us to make effective and efficient decisions. We can change the way we do our rate structure to make sure they're equitable and fair. Um, we can make sure that we put up or dig up a road. We're also fixing the water pipe and the sewer pipe at the same time. You know, bond for those projects at the same time is a bit ideal. Um, affordability, if we can have more housing with stock, hopefully we can have more affordable housing. Um, and then having a stable uh, access to water uh, the town owns, obviously something that will help us uh, long term when it comes to climate change and everything else. Um, so that's an example of kind of hitting all four. Um, similarly, we felt the main wastewater trend, uh, treatment update kind of felt within those two things as well. Um, talk about a merger uh, was one of the goals to be brought up. Um, so that kind of falls under efficiency and affordability. Um, you know, I'm sure you made the case for all four of them, but right now we thought that was kind of the place where that, that fits the best. Um, talking about redirecting, condensing committees and commissions. Um, we thought that fell within three of them, uh, housing efficiency and affordability in the sense of um, if we take, say, the planning commission and say your goal is development in East End Park for the next five years, right? That's going to help us maybe find more housing, more affordability. Um, if we have less staffing for 25 communities we have, um, that's going to allow us to be more effective, efficient internally. Um, and also if we don't have to staff eight to 15 meetings a month after hours, we're saving on overtime, we're saving on employee burnout, uh, we're saving on employees burning out and then leaving and then having to hire new people and the learning curve that happens. Um, so that's one of the things that fell within there. Um, capital plan, I think it's pretty straight obvious. It, it helped all four of us just kind of plan in general. Um, Permanent software uh, really falls under right now efficiency and effectiveness. Um, if we have an online system, um, we talked about this before, but we can have residents not to come in to do permitting. We can make it uh, more streamlined. We can make sure it's checking all the boxes. Um, so, plan zoning, uh, finance, fire department, uh, the list office all knows happens simultaneously. So, we can kind of track the steps and make sure we're not missing anything. Um, uh, pedestrian safety, um, we would go to uh, more efficiency, also um, housing development, if people feel they come here and they'd be safe, maybe they're more willing to live here long term. Um, foliage we put under um, affordability, um, improved town hall meeting tech. Um, so for these meetings, uh, effectiveness, um, I won't go through all of them, but you kind of see uh, the thought process we, we put together. Um, with all that said, and I think uh, all these goals are Great. Um, you know, we're also looking for things that can be attainable in, you know, the next nine months. Um, so we can't obviously do all of these. So I think um, some of the conversations should circle now around what the boards want to focus on this year, what your goals want to be for this year, um, how we want to attain them, the timelines, uh, who will be responsible for them. Um, you know, that's something I've said in these meetings that are, you know, I don't think anyone disagrees with the majority of these goals. Um, more often not, it falls on the staff to then implement them. So as we say, we want to do one or two things, you know, that's going to take up my time, Stephanie's time, everyone else's time. So we have to be very um, aware of what we want our goals to be and how they're going to impact uh, everyone and what support everyone's going to have as we go through these goals. Um, with that said, I'll leave it up to the board's comments or uh, where you guys want to go from here. I want to make start with maybe the things that we strongly agree on. Like, so aqueduct, possibly, and the wastewater treatment plant, those seem to be 
necessities. Necessities yeah. and agreed upon by all the board members, but maybe I'm, I don't want to speak for anybody. No, I, th I think that those two are important because they're infrastructure and they affect everything and it, and it, and it literally takes the entire, it takes a village and a town to get these things done. So I would agree on that. I agree also, as well as creating a capital plan. I think that's always going to be important. So if we were doing kind of a scale one to 10, maybe that's a way to kind of look at this. Um, is anyone against making the aqueduct uh, a 10 being the most important thing? No. No. Uh, going to the main wastewater uh, upgrade. Um, and it's a necessity, I think. Yeah. We can't not do it. Okay. Are you looking for us to rank? Yeah, I think if we can kind of get down to what we feel is most important. Um, over, over what time span? Over time span as well. Yeah, as well. So, like, uh, ideally, the aqueduct and the main sewer part happened this fiscal year. Um, and some of those things are already in motion. So, those things are kind of not to the easy, but they're kind of already rolling along. So, it's kind of just seeing through fruition, hopefully. I mean, I would almost make create a capital plan before everything else because the other the aqueduct and the water treatment plant are capital things. And so if we're looking at anything else, it all I mean those two things are huge pillars. So I would I would almost put that capital plan as the first thing, knowing that those other two things are already happening. Um and I think it was before capital plan was something we want to do internally anyways. Um so we're happy to that's going to be on the list for the press to do anyways, whether it's a goal or not. It's a goal of ours. So, and I mean, a lot of the capital. I'm sorry. Oh no, I was going to say, and that that informs what the boards do. Like, we can have all the ideas that we want, but if there's no money for it, <laughs> then there's no point. Yeah, and it's also for the departments too to understand like the need and necessity of things and where things need to be spent and how we're going to spend them. And uh, again, having a capital plan allows us to go back to say, you know, if we make this decision, how does that impact all the other decisions? We know what to make the next. Out of 10 years. I was just going to say a lot of these are integral to the cap. Yeah. So. Uh, are there anything else on here that people consider a, a 10? Not a 10, but um, I don't know. It's high up there is improved communication with the public, which we can do as well as your office. Um, we have a, we need to inform them more. And I'm not saying the town and the office is not doing it, but we also as trustees and select board can do more informing, um, especially because of what's happening above. Knowledge is power sometimes. Um, tell my daughter that, but, um, you know, I think that's important here because to me, that's also like a 10 because of what you're talking about. Up there. No, I, I agree. Because to accomplish any of these things, we need good communication right. between each other and the, and with the community. Well, that would tie in with improving town hall meeting tech. Well, if you put those two together, because we've had some meetings where things just failed in terms of, you know, Zoom working properly, people hearing or having a good experience. Yeah, those should be one item. Yeah, they should be one. Okay. I see one of those as a process and one of those as a product, but it's still. Yeah, I think so. There's, there's, I think uh, a good part of this is looking at what does this cost? Like the communication is going to cost probably people's time, uh, improving town hall effects and it actually be a set cost of yeah. they say $20,000. Um, so there, and that's, we'll get into the, the needs later, but that's, the difference where, you know, we're not paying Ray to do a listserv post, right? But we're going to pay someone $20,000 to come in here and fix this all up and, you know, do everything else. So um, there is a difference there. Um, yeah, I'd like to keep those separate because communication is like strategy and this is a thing that we buy. Or have donated. Yes, or have donated. <laughs> I'm going to put that in the standard. 
But I would agree with Lisa that that should, if it's not a 10, it's a nine on just the communication because you can't accomplish anything if we're not communicating, communicating well, I say nothing of the word communication. And I think as far as the capital plan goes, it's, it's important, but you know, I, I think it's unlikely as far as funding a capital plan is going to have an impact on our ability to purchase the aqueduct or the wastewater treatment plan or improve the wastewater treatment plan. Unless we can roll back time and start 10 years ago. <laughs> Read about Shelburne's what makes what wastewater plan and how they put money aside for the last yeah. 15 years to keep the cost low. Yeah. I think I grab my DeLorean. Tell me, sell it. Come to the capital plan. Um, so I think internally, uh, we would probably rank uh, the condensing or redirecting of community expansions probably pretty high, you know, talking about um, affordability and burnouts. Um, Where? Uh, redirecting condensed committees and commissions. Yep. Um, yeah. You know, just we, we talked about this before in meetings, but the plan zoning, you know, probably has somewhere between six to nine meetings a month they staff, if not more. Um, after hours, all, I think a few of them started at four, but they go past four thirty, which is no more working hours. Uh, the meeting last night started at seven, yeah. seven. Yeah. Um, so someone like Stephanie, who was there, was here from eight yesterday morning till nine last night, then drove home. Is back here at eight for this meeting. Um, and with Mike, there with Mike, yes. <laughs> it's also a meeting Tuesday night you had. So I mean, these are just things where you know. Um, yeah, that's that's the priority. So yeah. I think that for us internally, that would definitely be a priority of how best to restructure some of these committees so they're working more effectively for us, but also for staff time as well. So I'm selfish going to put a 10 in this because I think it needs to be something that happens uh, sooner rather than later. At the risk of throwing a wrench in things, um, <laughs> do it. I'm wondering if the process or the steps or the thing we should be talking about before we're talking about condensing is merging and how high internal staff would rank that because a lot of the condensing makes sense around the context of a merger especially when we're talking about planning board town development review village development review moving into one design review moving into one well that brings up a so i i just want to know yeah. how high town staff would rank it yeah well, I know how high I would rank it. I think everyone has varying degrees here. I'm just curious how high yeah, it would yeah. be ranked. In <laughs> I can uh, tell you what everybody's number is. It's a pointed question. Let me stop sharing my screen. I'll update my resume. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then I'll speak. Um, so I knew this question was coming today, so I thought about what my answer would be. Um, so I think I, I said a few minutes ago, you know, one of the issues with these goals we have to consider is that the majority of the work falls on myself and my staff or the staff um, after these goals set for uh, reference, uh, working to try to acquire the aqueduct has taken, you know, um, 20 to 30 hours a week of my time um, above, you know, 30, 40 hours I work normally. Um, on my last vacation, I was on the call with a lawyer two or three times of the five days because we're going through certain things with the aqueduct. Um, so these things do take a lot of my time, take a lot of people, other people's time. Um, to be fully transparent, um, I feel I'm drowning in this job and I feel my staff is too with the amount of work that is thrown upon us. Um, and it can be very difficult for a lot of us to get through the day, get through the week, get through the month and feel like we're doing a good job because you're always overwhelmed of the day-to-day -day stuff, but also the larger stuff you're, you're dealing with. Um, with all that said, I think a merger internally would be massively helpful for the staff and the administration. Um, if a merger is a goal to be done by March, I don't know if I'd survive. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there are a lot of you know, it's not as, as we found with the water company, it's not as easy as snapping your fingers and acquiring a water company. There's lots going into it. Um, if a merger were to happen, um, there is a lot, a lot of work, a lot, a lot of conversations that have to have, not only of whether it's good or bad, but also what the process would be, what it'll look like, um, who's doing what, what happens next. 
um, how how many ten of you still exist on a board, you know, a, a after the fact. Um, it, there's a lot, a lot of work that goes into it. Um, I am not against this being a longer term goal, but for this to be uh, happen the next year, we'd have to drop everything internally and just focus on this 40 hours a week, every single week. Um, that'd be a little, that's being a little dramatic, but that would be, you know, it would be a lot of our time, and that'd be the one thing that we could accomplish over a long period of time. Um, so that's as honest as I, as I can get. Um, I think it'd be very helpful for us. Uh, it's just not something we can, we can accomplish in the next few months. So. I think also that I'm not sure how the rest of the village and the town feel about this. I know how, and I, you know, that's, but I know a lot of people out there who have very strong opinions. We, we need to see what their opinions are before we even have that discussion. So I feel like we're jumping ahead here. Well, I think we're, I mean, I think that's the context of the conversation is jumping ahead. That's the point. I mean, I think, I, I don't know, I've had probably 30 conversations in the past month about a merger with residents. I think if we're talking about things like affordability, like that is, a merger is a key to maintaining affordability in the village. Like it's, it's not, <laughs> Jeffrey, how, how high did your tax rate go up this year in the village? How high did your tax rate go up? And, and the merger would, would, wouldn't have you, significantly I, affect our tax rate. Listen, uh, I want to move this conversation along, but move it along. You, the village has far less revenue than the town does. In order for the village to maintain solvency, you are going to have to continue to inflate the police contract, parking fees, like or and the tax rate. And I think for the people in the village who want to stay in the village, that's like a real conversation. I understand that there's historical importance and that there's context and there's people who want to maintain separately, but like we are effectively going to create two classes of people here and segregate them by class if we continue to have both. I can give you a list of a ton of reasons. I asked and for it. I please, spoke to 50 people. Document. No, what I'm saying is, no, no, wait a minute, Laura. Every, what I, love I'm, guys. No, I, love, I love the passion. What I'm, <laughs> what I, I know what I'm saying is That's this is problem. not a short term yeah. thing. I agree with Eric. If we're going to consider this, and perhaps we shall, it's not something we're looking at in the very near term. So that's, I think we should move on. To clarify what I said, as I don't think, what I meant was, I don't think a merger should happen in March, but I think the conversation around it can happen. I talked about this in June in my presentation. I don't think there's anything wrong with, like Lisa said, talking about this publicly and, and having conversations with people and see how people feel, see what researching into what it could look like. You know, that's something we have the capacity to do. Um, that's something we can look into and have more information for everyone. Um, I don't think it's something we should just not talk about or take on. It's something that should be a conversation that happens publicly with this board and, and people, public, uh, people in the public um, to get a sense of what people actually want to do and what steps it would take. Um, because I think that's a large piece of this puzzle is what, how could it happen? And then if it did happen, what would it look like? Because there's a thousand different ways that this looks like in, in the past. Um, and I don't know if it's something where there is a subcommittee created or, or something where people are talking about it, but um, I've had a lot of people talk to me about it, um, pro and con, um, but I don't think it's something we can ignore because it's something that we have to at least look into and have information on and, and have um, some kind of sense of what it will look like before we could go forward with it. And it's also financial savings. And that's, in the long term, that's the key. Well, and so. It's not well, necessarily financial savings. Well, okay, so I, I love all of this and I am, I'm pro-merger, I'll, I'll say it, but what I'm, Pro before that is having some stability, which we're in the past five years, we've gone through a lot. The town, the village has gone through a lot, a lot of change in leadership, a lot of change in residents, a lot of change in lots of things. And quick shout out, Eric, you've done a great job. Like one of the main things we wanted when we looked for a new municipal manager was somebody that would just bring stability. And I think you've done a great job in doing that. Your staff has done a great job and it's super hard that's really hard. And I think that the the aqueduct, the main water plant, the the plant are two things that 
it's infrastructure, it's basic. And I think that that brings stability. The merger, well, I love it and I want the conversation to happen. That's bringing instability. And I don't think we're going to survive that as a community <laughs> unless we have that, that basic stability to start from. And I think people knowing that when they turn on their water, it's going to work, knowing that when they flush their toilet, it's going to work. Knowing, yeah, I think that that we need, we need those basics. Um, we just went through STR stuff. We just went through school board stuff and it's exhausting. And I think like, let's start on something we can all agree on, which is water and sewer, <laughs> even though it's a very complicated issue and knowing that there are finite resources with the staff and that the volunteers that do things are stretched to their limits as well. I'd rather focus on those two things, have the conversation, start up a committee, like let's talk about it for the future, but like, let's get these things done, figure out our communication, figure out our capital plans. Like let's just get the basics done. That's why they're tense. Yeah. Right. But, and, and with a merger, like, yay, let's have the conversation, figure out how to do that strategically. So we have but to, like, we have to rank how important that yeah. is. And that's, right. and that's in my book, seven or an eight. Yeah. So, like, let's do it, but let's, because we can't do all these. I w these are all tests, but we can't. So, yeah. so. I think we're talking huh? subjects. Let's keep I, going. I would like to um, rank the short-term rental and re-engage that discussion. I'd like to rank that at least a nine. Well, here's a, without putting you guys in the hot seat, staff, so if we had, with my whiteboard, a pie chart of your time and your ability to do things, right? You were talking about how many hours a week that you guys are working on things. If we had a pie chart and there is only so much pie in this instance, and how much of, how much of your pie is the aqueduct, the upgrades, managing day-to-day -day things, like we have to look at you guys as a finite resource. So totally agree on SDRs. I totally agree on all of these things, but like, as we're going through what it, there's, there's a point where we have to go, no, all these things have to be five and below, unless there is a committee well, or extra staff. I, things can still be a 10 and we choose not to do them this year. Yeah. You know, there are, so there, you know, um, you could rank the merger a 10, but not do it in March. You know, you could, we have to, all of these things are important. That's why the boards pick these as their goals. Um, but the next step is going to be picking three or four of them, you know, or five of them and saying, these are what we want to do this year. And these are the only five we're going to be able to really accomplish. Um, but also ass assigning ownership. Like some of these yeah, we yes. don't each have to own. We assign them to like the committee, the advisory committees, or we assign them to town staff or we assign them to ourselves. So, so I have a question. Um, would purchasing and implementing permitting software release you in a number of hours to do other things? So is the software itself a 10 yes. because that shortens yeah. the amount of yes. time? Yes. yes, that would free up a lot of time in the zoning planning side. And you don't need approval from us to buy it. I mean, except for in the general With the, the funds, yeah. But, mm -hmm. but it just... Uh, Again, it, buying software is not as easy as snap your fingers and have it the next day. There, we have to have go through webinars with different vendors. We have to that takes you an hour, yeah. probably two of them before they even give you a price, um, and then we have to decide which one we want. But then there's the training implementation that usually takes a few months. Um, we purchased it in payroll software back in June mm -hmm. or May. We still haven't implemented it because we're still going through trainings. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about even again permanent software, which will be a long term savings and time it is a short-term increase in time until you have the software implemented and trained and going so it's like first three four months you're actually increasing the workload before it decreases after the fact um but those things will take on because we know the cost benefit of it is worth it but it's just you know um and then even you need two or three people in those webinars you have to get different views on different people different opinions who else can be using software um so it is it does take time. So I just want to make sure that like permits off for the goal we want, but it's also going to increase our time. So that means we have to focus on, can't focus on other things as well. Um, that's why these are so difficult. That's why we want to go through these. So the boards are telling us we want to get permanent software. 
So when we're working on that and someone calls and says, you know, there's a dead skunk on the road, it's like that may take a day or not a day, but three hours because we need to finish this, you know, like just so we're all on the same page where we're at, like the time commitment for all these things. So can we look at these and say this is a, this is something that's going to take three years. This is something that's going to take three months because that I'm getting stuck on like if we make everything a 10, but one takes three months, like let's do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we want the next thing we want to drink is the time period they'll take and also ownership. Okay. You know, like, uh, again, permit software will be internal, but short-term rentals could be external. You know, it could be two board members in the planning commission, you know, really working on what we want to do going forward. And that would maybe not, not be staff time, so then those two things coexist at the same time. But it has to be an agreement by the board saying, like, this is going to be done by the board members, not by internal staff. I mean, looking at what we have right now, like, you know, again, ideally, without these meetings even happening, the aqueduct will progress uh, soon. The main wastewater plant will have a vote this year. Um, you know, we're already talking about the committees being condensed um, or redirected internally. We want the capital plan already. So these are things that I think were going to happen already. No matter what, yeah. Um, and it's, it's great to have the support by the boards on these, but I think there's also things in here that we could kind of actually look at that we want to do. Um, you know, I think the board has already uh, provided whisper funds to in Woodstock to help floodplain restoration. So that's something that is happening as well. Um, but I think we also can kind of look at things as things we can check out this year. Um, We're already improving foliage experience, hopefully, with the help of the EDC and the select board. Yeah, but that's also like a longer term thing, right? But it's, it's also something I'm saying is we're working yeah. on it's happening right now. Uh, another example is improving billing and track of water sewer. That's something that could be kicked to the finance committee. And, you know, we have them on call now and say, hey, you know, now that we have these two things, can you sit down and actually work out how rates should be, how we should track them? So that's going to be a goal that we have over the next year and a half. That that's to be kicked to a committee. So again, it's not staff time, it's not board time. Um, so there are things that we can take on more goals if we're able to delegate them to different people and things. Yeah. Just a very quick comment. We say it's not staff time. Whether you're delegating to the finance committee or any other committee, it will be staff time. Yes. There does need to be. Yeah. yeah. It, but it's. It, but it's a much more efficient use of the staff. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, John. That's a good point. You know, and there's things like shared services staff and that I think was one of Susan's goals. Those things can be brought up in the budget cycle as we talk about things. Um, but I know your great example is up, so, uh, updating zone and bylaws, um, which will take a year, year and a half. I think there's grant funding available. We can use two rivers. Uh, but again, that could be staff time, but that could also fit under having more efficiency, better communication, you know, uh, there's a lot of time that Stephanie can speak to, someone comes in with a question that should take a minute, but they're there for 45 minutes, they're looking at a map, they're trying to figure out, and like, are you in the flood zone, are you in the town, are you in the village, and it just takes a lot of time to walk through that whole process. One of the things that's on here, in, in, it's, uh, in every category is the uh, culvert yep. thing, which I don't call us. That's coming internally from the, your department. Um, and no idea of, uh, isn't that a normal thing, a certain amount each year or? It tries to be, so this was a goal from Sustainable Woodstock. Um, but again, if that's something where the, you know, again, we talk about that's an actual real goal of the boards and we want that to be a priority of our public works, then maybe we could find more money in the culverts budget line and say, we want to, instead of doing five replacements a year, we want you to do 10 replacements a year, or we want you to do, you know, so that's another step that we could say if it has happening, but it's not our, it happens with in the same priority as everything else with yeah. grading, with ditching, it's just, you know, um, but if it's a high priority, then we can move it up and, and more funding will be available. Then we would direct the public works to say, Culvert resizing is a priority this year. We want you to spend majority of your time doing that, and then maybe ditching or grading or takes a back seat. So these are the things we're talking about, like 
directing people to do things and then what the fall off is on other tasks. Yeah, but we don't have the expertise to, to know how much of a priority that is without hearing some reports. Yeah, but I mean, again, so if that was a goal, we could typically answer for you. If that was something you want us to do. So um, I say that the first committee, you know, the purchase and the treatment are going on, but if the first committee can start, which is create a capital plan, we could get going on something uh, fairly easily um, to start. Some of these other ones are going to take some time, but it's, it's really important. And that's one that could work as a subcommittee with staff, with, you know, does anyone else? Ready is to there start? a reason we wouldn't assign this to the finance committee? And that could be the first one. I'm, I'm just asking. I don't know. I know I'm, 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 we have them at our disposal. I mean, unless folks want to serve on a subcommittee. Yeah. But I'm uh, just saying that yeah. I think so it's in the first thing. Something that the department should be putting together. The department heads our finance office. Yeah, I, I think um, what happened in the past, and I don't know if John was John to do this, I think in 2019, 2020, the finance committee now paid someone to put together a capital plan. I put together a capital plan and won some support. But then it was never followed because <laughs> I don't know if I ever had the buy in internally. Yeah. So we have an existing capital plan that's for five years, five years old. Um, and I don't know if it was pre COVID or post COVID. Um, or during. Or during. Yeah, so that could also be. It needs to be. There's a framework, but it needs yeah. to be repopulated. So it's more update capital plan than create. Possible. Somewhere between those. Yeah. And I will say where I worked in the past, the capital plan was kind of done specifically with the budget. And so you'd have as your department heads put together the budget and everything else, they'd also put together the capital requests. Then internally, the staff would kind of create the update the five year plan. Then we'd have, I'll tell we do this, a capital committee, which would then meet to decide what project was funded that year, what project was funded in the future years. Um, so uh, that will be done internally for us as we go through the budget process, but we're happy to have more help. Okay. So what you're saying is do it together with the budget cycle this year with department heads. Yeah. And then can we act as the capital committee to determine what we want to move forward? Yeah, you, I mean, you'll be doing that in the budget process anyways. Okay. okay. That's great. When do you start preparing your budgets? Now? Uh, okay. It's on the select board agenda for uh, September 17th. Um, and we had the first conversation yesterday with department heads. Okay, so it's moving forward. So we can say check, it's moving forward. Mm -hmm. yeah. Check. Um, I can say I'm happy to work on regulating short term rentals, volunteering for that, um, to work with someone on that, whether it's planning or whatever. Can we go back to that? Because I yeah. brought that up as I think uh, a high priority. And I don't know. So I and some people. You know, I mean, what do people rank that as on a scale of one to ten? You know, I think Susan, you might have ten or a nine or. You mean to reopen it and yes. Yeah. Well, I can probably start. I I would think you know, I think one of one of the concerns with everything we're we're picking right now is um, the in, improved communication with the public has to happen before any of this can happen. I mean, we need we're you know we're going to need to engage the public in you know what we do about the aqueduct, what we do about the wastewater, and certainly um, a short-term rental initiative. So I would rank it high as well. I do think we have a time constraint, or I will say there is a time constraint that I'm mindful of, which is that the village, uh, well, in the town we have a moratorium on new permits for short-term rentals and bed and breakfast that expires on the 31st of December. So if we want to make any changes to the policy before opening that up again, and then the village window opens for new permits on. And the village also has to revisit their yep. just because to clean up the language. Um, so we're that's, talking about on Tuesday. Yes. And I, I think there's Susan going back to your point, like as we're talking about the communication and I think Eric's brought this up too, like we do things and then we sort of like fall off of it. I mean, we're exhausted and we need to do other things, but like building in that, like 
at every trustees and select board meeting, like here's what, what's happening with STRs, here's what's happening with water, just like a touching base because I know all calls and be like, what's happening with this? And it's because it's not the topic du jour, but, and if it's okay that I bring it up, like we know that there's been an explosion in short term rentals in Woodstock um, in the past couple of months, like not registered, but there's been an explosion. So like, that's, that's something that I think is worth everybody knowing is that these things are happening, whether we're actively working on them or not. Like the world is existing, even as we're working on getting water and sewer. Can I make a suggestion? I just could go right down the line instead of jumping around. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, okay, so we uh, 10, 10 for the way water for it. I, for Merger Village, I have stopped the conversation. Uh, if people want to do a number, that's fine instead. Um, I think Laura would probably be a one. Be a 10. <laughs> yeah, mine would be a zero. No, it would be a 10. It would be a 10. <laughs> you need zero. Does anyone, does anyone else want to give a number? Or are you uh, well, like I, 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 for election this year? You want a seven, eight, seven, eight? Yeah. yeah. Okay. One. <laughs> one. He's got a three year. I'm one. <laughs> Put our heads in the sand, guys. Oh, no. Okay, next redirect and condense advisory boards. I have nine. Yeah. Ten. Ten and nine and ten. Yeah, I have a But nine. I think if we, yeah, I mean, I think we both have a, a, a number and a time frame for each, right? Oh. Well, so yeah, the merger like, may be more important, but the time frame isn't as crucial as the first two items. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, just to point out, Carrie, Brenda, or Frank, do you have any number you want to throw in for the merger conversation? I want to say eight for the merger, although give it a, a longer, you know, time, time frame. Um, <laughs> but to start talking about it actively now, but I think it's important. I, I, agree. Give, it, I give it an eight. <clears throat> eight. So a seven or eight, but like long-term. There were three ones. Okay, well then that takes it down to a seven. I, I, I'll do the averages later. <laughs> but there's a now and a long term. Great. So redirect and condense advisory boards. Is that a now or a long term? I, I think that has to be. Uh, that's, that's a now. now. That's, that's a now. now. That's a okay, now. it's a now with a what number? Ten. 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 It meets the first guideline head on. Yeah. Effective mm -hmm. use of our staff, including. Our okay. Staff. Create capital plan is a now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this year. Now ongoing. Yeah, I'm ongoing. ongoing. Yeah, it's ongoing. From uh, October till uh, January. Okay. Purchase and implement permitting software. Is it 10, but it's part of it. You yeah. can't all be 10. All right, so make it a 9, but it's still, it's important, but yeah. it's not something that's going to happen right away. So I think what we can do internally is after we have ranked these, we can go together and we can kind of put together a timeline and maybe the amount of time we think it will take. So the next meeting, we can actually see that like, maybe they're all tens, but some will take three years, two years, some will take no staff, some will take a lot. And then okay. we can choose the ones we want to focus on this year and ones that can wait till next year. So, but I have a question. So purchasing and implementing from software, if the advisory boards get condensed, so Quickly. the software won't help the boards. It helps uh, internally. The we uh, every permit we have is paper, yeah. um, and sometimes they have to go through three or four departments. Um, so it's more the internal time, like the eight to four thirty work that gets done. Right, but what I'm saying is, is that we reduce the advisory committees. That gives more time to look at permit. Yes, yes, and so, that includes things like permit to use the green permit to use the sidewalks like it's yeah. all of the permits yeah what's that by permits and definitely we all can work together and in the definitely permits can be kathy because kathy's in the zoning and the um and the listeners work so closely together so it's it ties us all together so we can see in real time what the permits are um but who, who is what permits and what and where the, where the process is so it's all tracked in real time awesome. So I would say that would go after condense the like it could be a kind of now after the advisory board's been condensed. 
Does that make sense? Stitch it. Right. Oh, I think it can be both. Yeah. I think they can happen at the same time. Yeah, I think they can oh, happen yeah. at the same time. So now ish. <laughs> Traffic calming and pedestrian safety. <laughs> I think this is a this is a long This is an easy one. Just have an <laughs> office of standing in front oh, Lord, of Elman, have Selm, Elman Central and direct traffic. No. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Oh, uh, no. I guess like what I would ask no. about this one is like this feels pretty vague. And so like, is there a specific goal that we want that we can say like we've achieved this? Yeah. So so this is this was one of mine, and this is a conversation that I have a ton in the village about like North and South Park Street. Is it two lanes? Is it one lane around the school? Obviously. Over on High Street between High and Golf, there's lines like what people complain about or comment about speeding, which is, according to our numbers, not really an issue. Um, but the way that you slow people down, make it safer for pedestrians and bikes, which I think we need for the village to be a happy, healthy place, it's traffic calming. So it's lines, it's not just like radar and put a cop out there. It is let's make people know that they that there is one lane or that make parking spaces bigger so that people slow down and pay more attention, those sorts of things. And it is a, not just painting lines and putting up signs, it is a, let's look, take a holistic look at how you slow people down, whether it's in the village or the town, yeah. you know, going through rural roads, how do you make people slow down so that horses don't get hit? Like, it's a big thing. So it is not a now, but I think there are components that could be soon. So, I mean, I would, it is something that people ask me about every single day. So but I know it's a longer term. Something thing. specific that the village will want to focus on this year around yeah. that, like whether it's a sidewalk in East End, whether it's. Or a traffic study. I don't know. Yeah, like yeah. something yeah. specific that we say, like, we know we achieved this. Yes. As opposed to, like, yeah. So I think we're going to measure that we increase pedestrian safety other than the number of accidents. Or maybe it is decrease the number yeah. of well, I mean, speeding tickets. Part of that would be if you have a police officer in the village. Measure it by how slow the traffic or how fast the traffic is going. So that would be a difference during peak times because they're moving the traffic, holding back the 150 people that are waiting at the curb. Okay, so is the goal then just a patrol? I, I guess what I'm trying to get to is like, what is the specific thing we can check off? Because it sounds like there's multiple things under traffic calming and pedestrian safety. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, we've got, well, we've got. Yeah, we've got study. Yeah, we've got speed studies like on river where we have the sign. We are bringing in data from that, so we can do those things. Um, I mean, we can obviously use surveys, um, but like there are some obvious things. Like, I mean, literally just on North Park Street, is it two lanes or is it one lane? Like that is a let's answer that question by either making it two lanes or one lane. At least in the village. We should just have this look during one of our meetings and, uh, and probably be an ongoing yeah. conversation to yeah. it. I know that like I think we should move well, along. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's at the scene. I don't think it's the village. It's not. No, but it's no, I was just speaking for the village. Yeah. But I think it's like whenever we have like the bike races come through, especially in the town yeah. like out in South Woodstock, we hear from people with horses and we hear from people who are trying to get their cars out. And like that's a. It's a so maybe one of the measurements is also like public perception too. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yep. There's so I think a lot of complaints in public. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. Yes, but that's that is traffic calming, right? And, and it's not just a police officer because that's white lines. Well, yeah. it's all, it's all one officer. Police officer. Yeah. It all relates to that. Yeah. It doesn't. Lines not going to make a difference as people run over them and they get. Paid. We have no. lines. Yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. ranking. All right, so that's. So I, I, I think we can maybe have a more specific goal for this year or just having it as an ongoing conversation for the trustees over the next year and re re revisit it. Uh, I would put it at a seven and it is a ongoing thing. Anybody? That's fine. It in is the ongoing. scheme of everything here, I, I have difficulty. Yeah, change it. Okay, well then that's, but that's speeding out in South Woodstock too. Mm -hmm. So then that means that that's a you less of a priority. I would go lower. Okay, so speeding in South Woodstock, speeding. Well, everywhere. we're trying to address that in, in in other forums, not entirely successfully. But I know, but that's a but if it's an if it's a goal, it is a goal. Okay, so six then. Sure. Yes, okay. um, six. Is... I do agree with Jeff. Um, 
probably not. Just to talk about uh, it. Probably yeah. potentially. Uh, I think the trustees' agenda next week and brief it's with, huge. with permits. So, yeah. 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 Then move it to the next one. Okay. Um, foliage experience. I think in the village, that's a big one. Yeah. But I that's okay. all, my challenge would also be like, what specifically are we trying to improve? Because this feels very unachievable because it's not specific. And is it our role or is it more of a chamber role? More of a chamber role. Yeah. I say cancel it. <laughs> yeah, <it's a> foliage. <laughs> Just go cut the trees off now before they turn colors. <laughs> it's an it's an it's an ongoing thing. We're taking steps to do something about it now, so I think we should move past that that subject. Well, I think we have to figure out whose role it really is. Yeah, that's role. well. You know, does the chamber exist? Um, well, well then, it's fine. It, it should exist. Yeah, that's I mean, it, it exists, but. <laughs> So maybe the goal would be to figure it out. <laughs> a fruitful conversation with the chamber of the committees that could take on some of the foliage work. And so it's not always on the trustees the last minute to find people to, to eat, to, to, to all, all that good stuff. Um, Improving it also goes under traffic. Yeah. People can't enjoy anything if they're stuck in it. It's just. If it can be flowing through so they can get out and go somewhere, as well as people that have to go places. It's, it's well, that's just it's volume. We, we're not yeah. built to take that much volume. You can't. But having someone direct traffic in the middle of a village would hugely help. Not according to the police. Not according to the well, police. That's because they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. I, no, think, I don't think that's true. I think I, we're too. moving on. We're really getting off on topic. Um, Comments from someone in the audience? <laughs> Um, improving I'm behind you, sorry. <laughs> no, no, Byron. <laughs> improving town hall meeting technology. And, and yeah, and has something. I want to put foliage out of six because we didn't. Sooner than later. Yeah. yeah. Sooner we, than yeah. later. Yeah. Um, and that's fairly easy to get ready. Well, well it's have to find the money. Yeah. Find the money and and get the re yeah. Okay. It, it, yes and no. Okay. And for the people that have to turn it on and manage it, that's yeah. Well, it is also hopefully it'll make it easier. Um, updating the zoning bylaws. I will advocate for this. This is an easy, not an easy, but this is an easy list to be directed elsewhere. This is something that uh, Two Rivers and the Planning Commission can lend their time to auditing the zoning bylaws. Um, we obviously did this in the village, redoing it again to making sure we've eliminated as much as we can parking minimums and other barriers to development in the village would be easy not to say that they're going to take action but at least audit and then make recommendations to the board would be something they could focus on between now and March. it would help immensely with housing yeah and it's related to advisory boards yeah that needs to be amended in the bylaws at the same time so we kind of need to deal with that yeah i think the updating zoning bylaws is helps with the effective and efficient government. I think it does help it with affordability. Like I think that you can add those. Like I think that that covers those things as well. That is not a quick term. Updating the bylaws will be. A, a oh yeah, that's campaign. like a years long project. Yeah. 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 But it's definitely important. To turn. Yeah, but I think that it's important to note that like it it affects a lot of things. So is that a 10 and one going, eight and one going or? I mean, I think it's a. It's given it. Yeah. An eight or a nine and ongoing. An eight point five. Red light shots for rental. Well oh wait. Oh oh yeah, sorry. The reason why I'm saying um, part of this is we've seen the, the map now and how many how fast and how quick it's grown. So enforcement is I think the first part of this, which I think could be done right away well communication is the first part right, right, that, yes, right. I mean, bringing people into compliance right. so well, uh, so don't look at the compliance that compliance numbers yeah. are a little fishy because we haven't had registered people um so one of the issues we have with um enforcement is in the town they can do it like with a 14 or something like that so but it's very hard for us to actually figure out someone's rented 14 pounds i mean see when someone's yeah, because so first if they advertise and they're not permitted. Yeah, we can't average. We can't enforce based on number of times. Yeah, 
Um, so we are talking to um, a potential someone who may help us with enforcement of short-term rentals, um, but that also has to go along with us being able to get revenue from enforcement and, and through the software. So it's kind of, we can't hire someone unless we have the funds coming in. Um, so it's kind of, a, a you know, we have to be careful with that, but we are working on that. I mean, really, you know, that's revenue that can help you. And I have to think there's people around with copyists and it's easy to figure out and easy to start a conversation. Well, none of it's easy. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I mean, you know, no control. Okay, so is there a number on short term rentals? I say nine. Anyone? I would say it's high specifically for the timeliness reasons we discussed earlier. In ongoing or? Uh, it's not ongoing right now. We're not really. No, I mean, I mean, the board is taking the action since the, yeah, the it's last vote. Be, it's something that's ongoing by committee, not town staff. Well, we need to. Well, no, it has well, to be a deadline. Been, Depends if you want to tackle it before the November yeah. town yeah. exactly. timelines, how important it is. Right. Yeah. I think we have to do something before that. Compared to all the other things that we say are tens and yeah. be done right now. But do you look at the number of people that showed up for the vote in the village? And the work that staff would have to do. I say it's not immediate. But I look at the number of people who voted in the village and how it passed. People in the village feel it's a net zero. I think we need to do what they said. It was a large vote. Yeah. And it eight months, um, and it was a large, yeah. So we need to respond to the village, at least the village voters, do what they asked us to do in the town. We, how off were you? Five votes, 10 votes? 32. 32. Yeah. Sorry, but um, I do think. This should be a priority for the village. Because yeah. they told us, get it done. Uh, Joining was I know I have a nine thirty meeting. I think people also have to get to work too. So we can uh, shared services and staffing uh, that can happen prior during the budget process months. Um, repair and improve village buildings. I would put that low just because there's not there's not a ton we can, I mean we have. We have ordinances about it, but enforcing those ordinances requires a lot of time and energy and money that I don't think people realize. So I think that's where the I think that's where the communication comes in, where there's like this communication plan and the 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 the, the shared staffing and services. I think that's something that can be done after lots of other things are done. Okay. So I would put that lower, like at a five. Anyone else, number wise? Well, I, I think in the village, I think it should be higher because people look at Colburns and they were afraid to go walk by. Yeah, like I think I think that I agree. But Ray's saying, I think I hear so many people about what's going on with that building that it's a safety issue that for at least and looking into enforcing the safety aspect of that building is important. Carrie, did you want to say something? I mean, in spirit, yes, of course, it's a very high priority, but in practice, there's very little that that we can do about it. We put wrote ordinances years ago, and it's very hard to make them have teeth. It's very hard to make it have, it, it's just very hard for us to do anything about it. And maybe if it, maybe it's time for the, the public to take that on and to get really angry at these build, building owners. But I don't think that we can really do much about it. Well, I'm not. I, I think we could at least emphasize the safety aspect of the ordinances that do exist. I think we just haven't even we've kind of let go of that because it, nothing happened. But we we need to continue to put pressure on that. That's something that has to be taken care of. Things are falling off that building onto the sidewalk. Yeah. Lucky nobody's been hit. I'd like to add something to that. Yeah. Um, I had a customer yesterday who is renting the apartment above the ice cream uh, shop. And the lady said that the place is absolutely a nightmare. She said the maintenance there. So I'm thinking that that place should get an inspection from the fire marshal to make sure that it's actually um, up to safety codes to be renting out to, for short-term rentals. 
Thank you. I like your shirt, Brenda. Thank you. Did you see what it said? Yes. <laughs> so repair and improve village buildings, what number do we want to give that, knowing that it, we've got 10 minutes left in this meeting-ish? <laughs> Well, I mean, you have to review seven. what's said now. So, yeah, seven. There's more than one building now that's starting to go. Yeah. Um, the street building is starting to go as well. Um, we talked communication on uh, nine or ten. Floodplain restoration projects. And I think, I mean, to me, these last three are very high. I mean, it may not be directing our resources towards the second, but I think the long-term stability of when we're all no longer here to get done you know sooner than later so i would advocate for a nine to a ten um just so we acknowledge the importance of them okay so the long-term nine for the culverts and the floodplain and then i think um the last one i think this is uh, probably a year to two year project um Going into the weeds on the aqueduct billing and, and a sewer billing, there are just a lot of uh, mistakes, uh, a lot of things that can be more efficient. Um, the finance committee has already looked at this a little bit. I know John Spector has as well. Uh, the water uh, working group has, this, uh, and there's a lot of things that can be changed that will make us um, able to capture the actual usage correctly and then determine how we should be charging people. And if we own both the water company the water system and the sewer system, we can kind of tie those together if we want to and make it maybe more understandable for everyone. Um, but this is, I think, a great opportunity that we could tap into the resources of the finance committee and say, hey, you have a year, you know, go look at this. And then if we are to acquire the water company, I think one of the selling points is we're, we're going to go away and find out the best way to actually charge you for usage um, in the most effective way. And we're going to go back in a year. Um, and we've done publicly in a meeting um, where the select board would decide what the rates would be. Um, so I think that's a great way of something important that also we could use the help of experts um, in the field as well to kind of guide us. So I don't know if John, if you have a, an opinion on that or not, or no, no, I, think, I, I think both if you want to, I think the finance committee would be happy to help with the, and capable of helping with both the water thing and the capital plan, whether that is. Can I take a look at that, please? Yes. Uh, Leo, can you have a seat for one yeah. second? I just want to check it out. Yeah. Hey, Brenda, can you mute yourself, please? Um, oh, okay, thanks. Whether that's delegating to us, we come back to you with a finished product, or whether it's advice and you're taking the lead or anything. Yeah, okay. And I'll report that to the group that this was discussed and we'll be waiting for your. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, okay, so I recommend next steps is internally, uh, we put together kind of what we think the time frame would be for all these projects and then estimate a cost, uh, an actual dollar figure, then also um, time-wise for human hours. And then we come back and the boards can revisit what they actually wanna make, um, you know, the goals for this year be in hopefully just one, one or two more meetings and then we'll flow right into budget season. Okay. Do you wanna set a, next meeting now or do you i would prefer off? to wait just because um the site board may have some special meetings coming up that we have to take priority potentially um so i'll make sure we have time for those first okay great sure yeah i have two very quick comments the first is wait, was, is there a microphone up there yes oh okay sorry the first is this is a fantastic discussion uh and um I, to connect it to the communication with the community, if there's one thing that I would communicate immediately to the community is this discussion. Send out that list or explain what you just talked about, explain what you resolved, explain what you didn't resolve. This is uh, the best select board trustees meeting that I've ever heard of or attended. Um, Good job, guys. No, this is what, the, and I think if people understood, it, it, it's just really important to communicate what you're trying to do to the community. I think it will add huge value. And the second thing is, I hope I, the most important thing that I learned at this was the comment that Eric made at the beginning when he described the level of, the, of what the staff are feeling day to day and week to week. And I urge you to, uh, if we care about affordability, I urge you in this year's budget to invest in additional 
in whatever resources are needed, which I think includes additional staff, to change that. That is an incredible expense that we will we have paid for in the last five years, as you pointed out, and we will continue to pay for it <coughs> by not spending money. In other words, having a staff that feel that way is the most expensive way to run a town. And so I urge you to save money in the long term by spending some money to change Eric's description of how the staff feel so that they feel, okay, we've got a ton of work, but we feel that we're being, you know, we feel like we can, we see some light at the end of the tunnel and they need, it sounds to me as if they need like more staff. And I hope you have the courage to take the most, to not take the most expensive route available to us, which is the way we've managed the village for uh, the town for a long time. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Approval of the minutes. Uh, so Susan uh, made some changes that uh, we've made. Um, so if you want, you can approve them with the changes. And, and again, there's Select nothing, one. there's nothing substantive other. Yeah, nothing. Would you say nothing substantive? No, some uh, uh, adding some people that weren't included and some some right. changes Thank like you. that. I won't say who's presently include people in the room that remember a few uh, wording changes. Are those Step minutes board. just select board minutes or are they? No, they're the, both what? the past joint needs. So somebody want to make a motion? Were these sent out? Yeah. Uh, yes. I came in and picked them up, but I don't know. I, I didn't look to see if they were in an email. So would you like to make a motion? Well, I, I, I think we have to make sure everyone has had a chance to review well, them, right? Well, we have right? majority say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if we want, we wait to the next joint meeting too. If there's trustees having a chance to review them, yeah, I think the trustees can look at them. Yeah, they're, 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 they're posted on the website, so they've been there for so legally we're all set. It's just, okay, do we have copies? Uh, we can copies for you, yes. If, uh, yeah, Kitty can make copies up before we leave. Yeah, yeah, okay, we can do it up. Yeah, yeah, we can do it offline. Yeah, and a motion for the I move the select board adjourn. Second. second, all those in favor, aye. 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 Make a motion for the trustees to adjourn at 9:27. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Right. Motion carries. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No, yeah, but we we will we'll make it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's extra. Yeah. I have a request, and then I would like to take.